Welcome everyone and thank you for your time today to hear from General Osteopathic Council as we host a webinar to discuss our continuing professional development scheme and specifically the peer discussion review elements of that. For those of you who don't know me, I am Matthew Redford, Chief Executive and Registrar for the General Osteopathic Council and it's my pleasure today to be introducing Dr Stacey Clift, Senior Research Officer, who will be taking you through the webinar today. My colleagues within the Professional Standards team are really well versed in running webinars with osteopaths in smaller groups and this webinar, where we're expecting over 300 attendees, um, represents a significant but important step up in terms of our approach to communication and engagement with stakeholders and particularly with the osteopathic profession. And we're recording this particular webinar today and publishing that later on. Everyone today on the webinar is actually making a small piece of GOSC history. We have never held such a large online event. So for everybody attending, congratulations. Having the opportunity to talk with such a large number of colleagues is incredibly important. And during 2021 and beyond, we intend to run more of these events in order to help explain, and if you like, demystify some of the work that we undertake. And so, for example, in March, a couple of months time from now, we'll be holding a fitness to practice webinar. And I would encourage attendees today to share that message with colleagues and to think about signing up as well. The use of online platforms to communicate has grown beyond recognition, I think, over the course of the last 12 months as a result of the pandemic, from office staff team meetings through to remote consultations with patients, through to talking with loved ones that we've not been able to see. And I think it's really important that before we start the webinar, I take the opportunity to say to every osteopath on the webinar today and every osteopath who listens to the recording after the event, thank you. Thank you for the work that you've done through the course of the pandemic in order to ensure that patients continue to receive high quality care. I know it's been a really difficult time for everybody over the course of the last year and I hope as we look ahead we can start to see better times in the future. So turning to the webinar today, my colleague Dr Stacey Clift will be taking you through a series of slides on the CPD scheme and the peer discussion review. You'll have the opportunity to ask us specific questions in relation to the webinar um, uh, and you can do that through the control panel which you'll be able to see located on your screen and we have a slide in a moment that will show you what you should be seeing depending on the device that you're using but of course you can email us questions as well. At the end of the session Stacey and I will try to answer as many of the questions that you've sent through as possible but we may not be able to fit all of them in within the time allocated but what we will do is to respond to any questions that are raised after the event so no question will go unanswered. Behind the scenes I have a couple of colleagues, another uh, colleague called Stacey and a colleague called Rachel who will be providing support to the webinar and they may respond to some of your questions directly as you pose them. Due to the number of attendees on the webinar today, all cameras and microphones are automatically turned off. Stacey and I will keep ourselves on mute when we're not talking um, and joining in the webinar. Um, some of you may say that's a good thing when my microphone is on mute. And during the presentation, there will also be two online polls. Stacey will let you know when those polls are going to happen. And when the opportunity for some interactivity takes place, the presentation will come off the screen um, and you will see the polls. And don't worry, the presentation will um, come back onto screen when those polls close. So without further ado, I will pass the online mic across to Stacey, who will take us through the webinar today. Stacey. Just going to show that, that welcome everybody and I just want to show you the control panel images just just so depending on the device that you're using so for those of you that are using an, an Android device the question pane is the question mark at the top 
probably be on the top um, panel of, of your device. If you're using the iOS, so an Apple device, the question mark um, icon will li likely to be at the bottom of, of your, your device. So you can use that, that icon to post your questions and it will look slightly different if you're using a PC, laptop or Mac so you can see that that's on the right hand pane as well so hopefully you've all found that on the control panel so that's great um, so welcome everybody to to the um, session on on the peer discussion review so basically what i'm going to do is take you through the peer discussion review process so the pdr and how it fits into the overall cpd scheme we're going to explore how and when you might select a peer if you haven't already. Um, we're also going to learn about what other osteopaths are doing about their peer discussion review. And we're going to look at that in relation to last year's um, CPD evaluation survey. And we're then going to examine the peer discussion review template. So we're going to look at the uh, completed example so you can see what that might look like. Um, in relation to, to it being completed. We're going to also look at how you can share your CPD record with your peer. And we're also going to look at completing your PDR template and how you can go about that. So that's the overview of the webinar today. So I thought it might be a good idea to start with looking at the aims of the CPD scheme and why we're doing this. So you guys as osteopaths are at the centre of the scheme. And what we're looking for, for the, the, the scheme to encourage is for you to be able to engage with, with the CPD scheme, get the professional and personal support that you need from the scheme and build networks and communities with other osteopaths and other healthcare professionals. So essentially, the scheme is about engagement, support and community. And we know from talking to other osteopaths that you like to talk shop. So a big part of this, the CPD scheme is actually doing something that you really love. Um, continuing to, it will also, the scheme will also help you to continue to enhance practice and also support practice in accordance with the osteopathic practice standards. The scheme's also main aim is to reduce fears about professional isolation, particularly for those osteopaths that are on the call that are sole practitioners, for example, and increase confidence to share your CPD and practice with others and enhance those professional relationships that you already have with each other. So in terms of the CPD scheme requirements, as you probably all are aware, you, you need to undertake a minimum of 90 hours over a three year period and 45 of those need to be learning with others. And as you can see from the diagram here in terms of the jigsaw puzzle, the peer discussion review is at the very center. So let's take a look at some of those jigsaw pieces individually. So standard one looks at the range of practice. So in, in this particular standard, we're looking for you to undertake CPD across the four themes of the osteopathic practice standards. And this includes communication and patient partnership, theme A, knowledge, skills and performance, theme B, safety and quality in practice, theme C, and professionalism, theme D. Under standard two of the CPD scheme, this is essentially around objective activity. So we're looking for you to have undertaken at least one, one of these activities. And so, so for an objective activity, you could do patient feedback, um, PROMS, so patient reported outcome measures, peer observation, clinical audit, or case-based discussion. So you only need to have done one of these, but we do find that once an osteopath has tried one of these objective activities, they tend to try out some of the others as well. Um, and you need to, in this, this particular component, you must be able to demonstrate how this has influenced your CPD or practice. Under standard three, communication and consent, we're asking you that you every three years, you undertake at least one activity in relation to communication and consent. Now, you, you may, it might be a top tip to kind of mention here at this, this point that your objective activity may also serve as your communication and consent activity. So you could potentially um, achieve standard two and three at the same time. So, for example, if you decided on a case based discussion or peer observation, you could actually if it, if it focused heavily on communication and consent, it could also meet both requirements in terms of objective activity and communication and consent. So bear that in mind when you're thinking about your activities. Standard four is about keeping a record and most of you are you already used to, used to that in terms of keeping an annual portfolio and documenting the evidence that you have for the CPD activities that you undertake. 
And as you can see from the very bottom of this diagram, towards the end of that three year cycle, we're looking for osteopaths to complete a peer discussion review in accordance with the CPD requirements. And the CPD requirements are those four jigsaw pieces that, we look up, that we've got up on screen at the moment. So we're going to go to our first poll um, just to get an idea um, among the group that, that are on, on call today in terms of how many of you have actually completed an objective activity. So have you done a case based discussion, clinical audit, uh, patient feedback or which would include PROMS as well, so patient reported outcome measures, peer observation, or you haven't undertaken one yet. And you can only answer, give one answer. So for those of you that have done more than one, pick the one that you think you're going to demonstrate as your objective activity, or alternatively, the one you've done most recently. So the poll should, be, should appear on screen any minute now. So hopefully you can all see the poll on screen and are able to click your response. And we'll report um, at, towards the end of the session on the results of the poll so you can see where you are in relation to the rest of the group. Right, I think the poll has now closed. So I'm going to move on. And we're going to have a look at the PDR process. So what is the peer discussion review? Basically, it's a supportive process that should help you as osteopaths learn from each other. It's essentially a structured, formal conversation that you have with a peer that you choose. Um, and during the PDR, you'll discuss your CPD and how it has impacted your practice. So the CPD in relation to those jigsaw pieces that we saw earlier. You can have one or more peers throughout the process or even carry out the review within a group setting. So you think about whether you would like to do it in a, in a group. Dispelling some of the myths. So some of the sort of questions that we've been asked from, from osteopaths um, that, that, that they think the PDR is when in fact it isn't. So a peer discussion review isn't a test and there is no pass or fail. It does not involve observing an osteopath's practice if, you, if, if they are your peer. And if you, if you are a peer reviewer, you are not expected to validate an osteopath's entire CPD record. A case-based discussion is an objective activity, not a peer discussion review. So hopefully that's reassuring. Um, in terms of why do you need to complete a, a, a PDR? Essentially, the, the peer discussion review enables a peer to confirm that you have completed the elements of the CPD scheme. So those four um, jigsaw pieces that we saw at the beginning, the objective activity, the, the mapping to the osteopathic practice standards, the communication and consent based activity and keeping a record. So essentially, you no longer need to submit a CPD annual summary form to GEOSC. Rather than submitting those full details to GEOSC, each year your CPD record will help you to carry out your peer discussion review. So essentially, the peer discussion review and its template are the sign off um, of, of your three year cycle. When should, you take, when, when should your peer discussion review take place? It obviously needs to take place towards the end of the three year cycle, but it's a good idea to start having that perhaps initial conversation and identify who that peer, peer is going to be quite early on in your cycle. You could try out the peer discussion review in year one or year two, perhaps to familiarise yourself with the template, which we're going to have a look at in more detail later. You could complete your PDR on a piecemeal basis, and by that we mean as, we, as you go along. So as you complete sections of the scheme, you could meet with your peer, get those signed off and, and, and so on. So that, that's also an option as well. And when we look at the template, I'm going to show you how you could potentially do that. In terms of the peer discussion review culture, what we want to encourage is that both you and your peer should be listening carefully to each other and receiving feedback with an open mind, giving you constructive and helpful feedback that you can use in practice, 
help you to um, encourage an attitude of curiosity and learn from every encounter and hopefully value new knowledge and insights that all peers and colleagues can bring. Um, and it's, it's important for the PDR to be conducted in a supportive way that emphasises and, and encourages engagement and enhances practice for both of you. So selecting a peer, let's look at that in a bit more detail. Who can you choose to be your peer? Basically, you could choose to uh, another osteopath or osteopaths, as I say, because you could do it as a group or, or a registered healthcare professional. So we've got some examples there, a physiotherapist, a nurse, chiropractor, etc. So the choice is yours. When sh should you select your peer? We'd recommend that you start to identify who your peer is and agree with them from, from as early on in your CPD cycle as you, as you can, primarily because you'll be able to build that relationship with them. And, and we do, do often think to ask when we, when we work with osteopaths, do you want to leave it until the end of your CPD cycle? And you might want to have a think about what the advantages and potential disadvantages of leaving it to the end as well. So, you know, ha ha have some th 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 have a think about that and see what would be most appropriate for you and your practice. Things to consider when you're selecting a peer. You ultimately want to select someone that you trust, someone that you feel comfortable with and you feel safe talking about your CPD with them. You also want to uh, select someone that's going to foster a relationship with you in, in relation to the uncertainties and mistakes are regarded as an opportunity for you both to learn. You also want to select someone that it's not going to make you feel that you're, you're being judged and, and that the peer discussion review is an opportunity to demonstrate you're, you're continually, continually learning from the process. So some of you will, will probably choose a peer with similar osteopathic approach to yourself, and that's absolutely fine. And some of you may, may decide that you want a different um, osteopathic approach or a completely different healthcare professional, and that's also fine as well. So just think about what would best suit you and, and your practice. So we're going to go to our next live poll now, which is have you identified your peer for the peer discussion review? Just to get an idea of how many of you on the call have actually done that. So it's just a yes or no answer. And hopefully you can see that on your screen now. So we just give you a few moments to complete that. Right, I think the poll has now closed. So I'm just going to move on to the next part of the PowerPoint. So for those of you that answered no to the poll, so you hadn't you haven't identified who your peer um, reviewer is going to be, let's have a think where where your peer could come from. So it could be someone that you work with in practice. It could be a regional someone from a regional group. It could be an, someone from an osteopathic alliance organisation. It could come from an, an alumni group or an osteopathic education institution that, that you're in contact with or where you graduated from. You could, another option is the Institute of Osteopathy online peer directory. And we're going to have a look at some screenshots from that so that people can have a look what that platform actually provides. But before we do that, I just want to kind of flag up with, with the group that you can do your peer discussion review online or over the telephone. It doesn't need to be a face to face activity. So let's have a look at the IO peer matching platform. So as you can see from this screen um, on the right hand side, you can see the account login details. So you'd set, set up a um, you know, email address and password and you'd start to build your profile um, to allow you to get some some matches. So we're going to have a look at the next screen. So this this is a hypothetical case. So it's not a real osteopath and these are not real osteopaths as matches, but it's it will show you how it works. So for this particular osteopath, if you look at the top um, pane of the, of the screen, so the blue part, you can see that this osteopath specialist interest, they've programmed this into their profile. Their, their specialist interests are H, um, NH, NHS practice, research and audit, teaching and education and something else. 
their predominant style of practice is a mixture and they haven't designated a geographical location, then they don't mind where their peer, peer reviewer might come from in terms of geographical location. The IO peer matching platform then provides, uh, uses an algorithm to, to generate um, some peer matches. So some other osteopaths that have all, also registered um, on the platform. And you, you can see that they've identified three potential matches for this, this um, osteopath. Again, uh, reiterate, these are not real um, osteopaths, but, but it, it shows, shows you that there's three potential matches there. For, for the osteopath and you can can also um, if you if you want to be if you only want to find a peer you can set your profile up to be be just that but if you want to act as a peer for others you can also um, set your profile up to do both so find you one and also support other osteopaths so so you can tweak your your um, profile accordingly and on the actual IO peer matching platform, there is um, a load of frequently asked questions and resources which you can download and have a look at as well. So if people are, are unsure about how to select their, their peer or, or want to go by a, you know, a bit more of an independent route, then this, this may be an option for, for you to do that. So in terms of um, the peer discussion review among the profession, you know, how, how are other osteopaths um, approaching this task at the moment? So we're going to have a look at some of the survey data from, from our last CPD evaluation survey, which took place in 2019 in relation to this. So you can see that large majority of, of osteopaths have access to someone that they can discuss their CPD activity with, and they have identified you know, large majority, so 58% have identified who's going to be their peer discussion reviewer. So we know that about the profession. We know that those that have identified their peer, 70% of, of the peers identified had agreed to undertake that role for, for the osteopath. And 50% of osteopaths have had their initial conversation with their peer, either about the peer discussion review or an aspect of their CPD. So you can see perhaps in relation to where, where the profession is in relation to perhaps where, where yourselves are at the moment in relation to this activity. Where are osteopaths finding their peer? So from the, the survey data, we can see that large proportion are selecting their peer as an osteopath they know, but they don't work with directly. So 41% there. Just slightly lower at 34%, they're, they're selecting their peer in relation to it. it's an osteopath that they work with, so work with directly. And you can see there's quite a significant 16% that don't know yet. Now, hopefully, um, you know, that's starting to drop as, as people get further through their cycle. But also that 16% may also be perhaps looking at the, the IO peer matching software as a, as a potential um, way to select their peer. And you can also see a much smaller proportion, so 5%, that have selected another healthcare professional. So what are osteopaths PDR experiences? So we know from the survey data that a large proportion of osteopaths have not had experience of a peer discussion review or similar of their own practice. And they haven't undertaken a peer discussion review of another osteopath. So this is why in a lot of our in a lot of geosks resources particularly in relation to objective activity that we have actually incorporated um, giving uh, giving and receiving constructive feedback sort of best practice top tips so to help you with both both objective activity and peer discussion review so i'd suggest taking some time to have a look at some of those um, in terms of building that skill set in giving and receiving effective feedback in terms of how other osteopaths are preparing for the P PDR, you can see that the large majority in 2019 hadn't made any plans yet. So just over half hadn't made any plans. But we have 24% planning to try it out in year one and familiarize themselves with the template. So I'm going to show you um, the template shortly. So, so bear that in mind in terms of thinking about trying that out if you're, if you're in year one. There's 18% that are going to find their peer to work with, but they're going to leave completing their PDR until nearer the end of the three year cycle. And that's fine. And that might might include a large number of you on the call today. 
And then there's a very small percentage, 7%, that are thinking about completing it on a piecemeal basis. So completing it as they do sections, as they go along of, of the peer discussion review template. And when we look at the template, I'm going to take you through how potentially you could do that so that you don't have to leave everything to the end if you don't want to. I'm just going to plug here because that was really in relation to the CPD evaluation survey um, 2019. Our, our current CPD evaluation survey is still open um, and it closes on the 31st of January. Um, and I'm just flagging it as a, as a potential activity for you because it can be used as a, as a learning learning resource. And, you know, if, if you're thinking to yourself, you know, what, why should I complete this survey? It will basically give you a sense check of where you are with the CPD scheme at the moment. It'll identify the areas that you haven't completed yet, so maybe help you to plan how you can do those activities in your CPD cycle. And also this year, we're exploring how um, COVID-19 has impacted on osteopaths CPD and practice. So we really want to hear about how that, that's going for, for you. Um, so it's an opportunity for you to have your say as well. And you can also claim CPD hours for completing the CPD evaluation survey. So, you know, if you have a few spare minutes after this session, maybe head over to the bit.ly link um, and have a go at completing the survey. So let's take a look at the role of the peer. What, what does the peer have to do? So the, the peer confirms engagement with, with the CPD scheme before the end of the three year cycle. So you might choose to do this by meeting before the end of the cycle with your peer. You might do it through ongoing discussions with during the three year cycle with your peer, or you might do it as part of a group, as I say. The key thing is to, because some osteopaths think that this is the case, the, the GEOS will automatically verify the required numbers of hours declared by osteopaths. So this does not need to form part of your peer discussion review. Your peer discussion review is a constructive conversation that you have with your peer about those jigsaw pieces that we looked at at the beginning of the um, presentation. So. What, what does the peer confirm? Basically, in the peer discussion review template, which we are going to go to next, there is a declaration um, which the peer would sign saying that, you know, you've met with your peer and you've met the, the, the four standards of the, of the CPD scheme and, and your peer would sign and date, date that. And you as the osteopath would also um, declare that on the, on the completed PDR template as well. So what I am going to do now in a sec no, in a second. Um, and if you have multiple um, peers, so if you choose to do it in a group, the, the, this is the sign off sheet that would be more important to you. So, for example, if you had a, uh, a peer that, that was going to sign off your standard two, so your objective activity and your standard three, so your communication and consent based activity, they would sign those two middle boxes um, for you. And then say, say you um, have another peer um, that signed your standard one, so your breadth of practice, so you're, you're mapping to the osteopathic practice standards and your standard four, so recording and keep, keeping and recording your, your CPD, um, they would sign, you know, boxes, the, the top and bottom boxes, for example. So there's that flexibility if you want to work with more than one peer to do that on the template. So I am just going to change my screen for a second so that I can bring up the peer, peer discussion review template. So hopefully people can see that and that is big enough for people to see on screen. So this is the peer discussion review template and I'm going to show you the completed example so that you can see how some someone could, could potentially fill this out because most osteopaths have found that mo more helpful than anything else. So essentially the the um, peer discussion review template is is a guide to, to walk you through that conversation that you have with your peer and make it a lot more easier for you to do as you go along and there's a lot of guidance in here and top tips for each of the sections so that you know you're not you're not sitting there guessing what you might need to put put in there so i'm just going to take you through this example so in in the actual template everything is highlighted in accordance to who 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 needs to complete the peer discussion review template sections so anything in blue is the osteopath so whoever's peer discussion review template it is that that's the sections that you need to fill out and everything that is with two icon icons that are in orange 
this those those are the the sections that your peer needs to complete for you or or complete in conjunction with you so you're quite clear who needs to complete what so at the beginning of the template there's some instructions for you so you know how to prepare when to when to meet and and things like that so think about what was going to work best for you some top tips on the day of the meeting and how you might go about doing that and completing the template. So there's some guidance to start with. Then the first sheet is about um, the osteopath and who your peer is going to be. So this is a hypothetical. These are not real osteopaths, but in this example, Grant's got um, his peer and it's, and it's Amy. And it tells you a little bit about how they know each other. So um, in, in terms of... Uh, their relationship as, as peers and that, they're get, that their peer discussion review took place on an, online via Zoom. The next section of the peer discussion review template is about you as the osteopath. So there's a really small section here, a lot of guidance, as I say, you'll see that there's very small boxes. They're not, not requiring a lot of text. So this, this, this box is about you as a practitioner, you know, how you practice, um, the sorts of patients that you see and the type of practitioner that you are and, and maybe some of the CPD that, that informs that. So very small paragraph. So potentially, if, if you were to complete the, the uh, peer discussion review template as you were going along after the session today, you could potentially complete this section ready for, for meeting with your peer. And then the rest of the template takes you through each of those jigsaw pieces that we looked at the beginning. So um, standard one, the range of practice. So again, you've got some guidance about how this standard could be met and not met. So you're, you're sure of what you need to do. Whoever's form this is, you would then write, just jot a few things down. So there's very small word limit in relation to what, what you've done into relation to in relation to standard one so mapping to the osteopathic practice standard so an easy way to do that might be for those of you that have used the geosc um, cpd online diary you could share your cpd online diary with your peer there's a small envelope in the right hand corner of the ozone um, and they could have a quick look in terms of the themes that that your cpd has covered and and go yep okay you know you've you've undertaken cpd in all four themes of the OPS and that's a good way of sort of verifying that so that's you'd write a few bits in, in that box there and then the peer would confirm yep that I've, I've, I've seen evidence of, of that across the four themes they've shared my CPD diary with me tick that box make a few comments in the comments section and that that section is signed off another example of the CPD standard too so the objective activity so we'll find out how many of you in the group have done that in a second. But potentially, as whoever's form it is, the osteopath, you'd write a couple of things down here. So in, in Grant's case, he did some patient feedback. So he's just written a paragraph about that. And he's also, also an educator. So he's done some feedback from, received feedback from students, and he's written a little bit about that. And then your peer has then written, the Grant's peer, Amy, has just written a few comments around what, what Grant has done. And then there's a tick box question. So just, just to highlight, um, standard two is probably the longest part of, of the peer discussion review template. So, you know, if you attempted to do that early on, you know, a large proportion of the template would be completed. Um, and then there's some, as I say, there's some tick box elements there. You know, has the osteopath provided the evidence? Has the osteopath provided a description. So if you've done, for example, your case-based discussion, you might want to share with your peer your um, case-based discussion um, reflection template. And that, that would help um, your peer to tick off these items in the peer discussion review template. So you can see it's quite a straightforward, you know, have you seen evidence of those? Standard three, we move down to the template. So this is your communication and consent-based activity. You've got some guidance there. And then you've got a section for the peer, your peer. So Amy in Grant's case, Grant's done his um, communication and consent based activity. He's done a range of different things um, and, and Amy's highlighted some of those. 
So for those of you that have done your communication and consent based activity, let, let's say, for example, you've done a, a course in communication and consent. Maybe what you share with your peer is the certificate for that course and, and any um, recording of like notes in terms of your reflections, in terms of how it's impacted on your practice, for example. Standard four, as we looked at in the, at the beginning, is about keeping your record. Again, you've got some guidance and some top tips in the template. And then your peer completes that, th this section. So Amy says, yep, she's seen she's seen um, Grant's recording of his CPD in relation to those four um, sections of, of, of the jigsaw. So we're not looking for every single piece of CPD to be verified. As I say, it's just those what you've done in relation to those four standards of the CPD scheme in that jigsaw image that we looked at at the beginning. So again, Amy, Amy's written down some, some very small comments in relation to seeing the record of his CPD. Then the latter part of the form is just thinking about overview and what next in terms of your next three year cycle. So you've got overall comments, perhaps particular strengths that Grant has identified and particular areas of development that perhaps Amy has discussed with Grant, for example. Then you've got your action plan. So this is looking forward to your next three year cycle. So again, lim very small amounts of writing in this in terms of what you're planning um, for the next cycle and your thoughts in relation to what you've learned. And this is the, the, the piece that we've already looked at, the conclusion. So, the, so have the standards, have, have the four standards of the CPD scheme been met and the sign off. So if you've got multiple um, peers, they'll sign different boxes, but Amy, Amy looked at all of these for grants, so Amy has signed all of the four boxes. And then there's the final declaration by the peer and the osteopath. So that's kind of just a real quick sort of walkthrough of the template and it, the completed example, and I'm hoping that that offers some reassurance to some of you in relation to how you do your peer discussion re review and, and record it. So we've had a look at that. So just to kind of highlight how you complete that peer discussion review is entirely up to you. You could do sort of brief notes of what was discussed and, and, and write on the template. And as I said, there's some word count suggestions in the template itself. You could complete a draft PDR template and submit the whole thing to the peer in advance to help structure that discussion if you'd prefer. Or you might prefer to jot down you know, some bullet points during the meeting in that template and then perhaps share it uh, with, with each other after the meeting once you've kind of, you know, tidied things up, for example. The most important element is that the document is agreed and, and is signed by both parties, verifying that you have completed those components of the CPD scheme. So just to kind of, I kind of mentioned it while we walked through the template, but sharing your CPD record, what, what do you need to share with, you, with your peer? As I've tried to kind of highlight, you don't need to share absolutely every single piece of CPD that you've undertaken. You need to think about which pieces would most demonstrate those um, four CPD standards of the, of the scheme. So the CPD that fits into the four themes of the OPS, CPD in an objective activity, and CPD in the area of communication con consent, and that you've been keeping a record. So for example, for those of you that are, are using the CPD diary, as I said, you can easily share your CPD diary on the Ozone with your peer and send it to them. And any of you that are using sort of e-portfolios, they have similar functions as well. So that would be a good way to um, share what you've done, particularly in relation, as I said earlier, um, in relation to the four themes of the OPS in particular. You might have additional evidence that you might want to share it in relation to the objective activity. So for example, your reflection template, and you might have additional evidence that you want to share in relation to your communication and consent activity. So that might include reflective notes, or it might be a reflection template, or it might be a certificate, for example. So just to look at um, some of the frequently asked questions that, that we get um, in relation to the peer discussion review, and we do have a section in the guidance that you've already been set, sent that you might want to have a look at after the session as well, which is pages eight to 10 of the guidance. So do I need to disclose any fees paid? Um, yes, as part of the um, 
peer discussion review template, it does ask you in that first section whether you've um, had whether you've paid um, to um, undertake your peer discussion review. But talking to other um, sort of partners and and and, and uh, institutions that, that are assisting with the peer discussion re review process, uh, they are you know saying that they they aren't. Um, asking for a fee so that shouldn't shouldn't necessarily be the case but some of you may may choose to pay for, for that um will my cpd record be looked at by geosc at the end of the three-year cycle um we will be looking at a lot a, a significant proportion of cpd records um folders and also um peer discussion completed peer discussion review templates as well as part of our verification and assurance processes um, can I claim CPD for conducting or undertaking a peer discussion review? Absolutely. Both you and your peer can claim CPD for, for doing that process completely. Um, how long does the peer discussion review take? Um, from uh, osteopaths that have piloted it and had a, already had a go, um, they've kind of said that it, it would take anything between um, an hour to an hour and a half to complete the peer discussion review template with their peer. Some frequently asked questions in relation to the peer reviewer. Um, do I need training to conduct a peer discussion review? Not necessarily, but as I said earlier, we'd recommend that you have a look at some of our resources in relation to giving and receiving constructive feedback, um, which are featured in both the peer discussion review guidance and the objective activity material that we have, because it will give you some best practice and top tips in relation to that, to that skill set, because ultimately the peer discussion review will involve um, giving um, and receiving constructive feedback. Um, what if I'm unsure that the osteopath has done enough to meet that standard? What we would say um, to an osteopath in that, that's worried about that is to ask yourself a couple of questions. Has the, osteo has the osteopath tried to undertake the CPD across the range of their practice? And how have they tried to inform their, their practice and learn from that CPD? Those, those are the two, two main questions that you can, should consider if you're, you're concerned about that. And what more should the osteopath do to meet that standard? Ultimately, if, if an osteopath has engaged with the scheme, it's most likely that they have under, you know, successfully undertaken um, the range of practice and learnt from, from their CPD a, a, as part of that process. So, so bear that in mind. Um, what happens if I sign off an osteopath as meeting the CPD standards and the GEOSC takes a different view when they look at the peer discussion review? If that happens, both the osteopath and the peer would be notified, um, giving some advice um, um, for, for sort of next time. Um, neither party would be penalised. That would only be the case if there was obvious signs of kind of collusion. That, that's the only way in which that would happen. So there's some of the questions. There are, are many more um, frequently asked questions in the guidance that you might want to look at, as I said. So thinking about kind of next steps. So you've been to this webinar and we're going to in a minute, we're going to have a look at some of the poll results and then go over to, to the questions um, that you've posed in the in the uh, questions pane. But thinking about, you know, you've been to this webinar, what, what, what are you going to do next? What's your next step? So for those of you that haven't selected a peer yet, that's your first step. Select a peer and agree how you're going to work together. Then you might want to review those frequently asked questions in the PDR guidance that you've already been sent. So pages eight to ten. You then might want to consider completing your PDR template as you go along, as I've tried to demonstrate with the completed example. Now, ways you could go around doing that are you could begin by completing the section about yourself, so the about the osteopath section. And for those of you that have, have said yes to completing an objective activity, you could potentially look at completing standard two. And for those of you that might have completed standard three, so a communication and consent activity, you might look at completing that section now as well. So those are some next steps that you could potentially um, go away and do after the session. And I just want to sort of highlight some useful resources for people as well. So obviously we have the dedicated CPD scheme site where you can find lots of information on various aspects of the CPD scheme. 
PDR related resources, you've already been sent the PDR template and the PDR guidance, but those are the direct links there on screen. You also have, if for those of you that are interested in doing the peer discussion review as a peer, as a, as a group exercise, you might want to look at the case study by the Northern Ireland osteopaths for some ideas about how to go about that. And then there's some further resources on different aspects of the CPD scheme. So we have some workbooks on how to go about planning your CPD. If you haven't done your objective activity yet, we've got a series of workbooks on objective activity. If you haven't done your communication and consent based activity, we have a workbook on that. And if you're worried about how to record and reflect, you might want to look at the keeping your, your CPD records. So I want to kind of um, wrap up so that we can take some of your questions and look at the poll results. But I just want to, to highlight to people if for any reason, if they have had difficulty in posting their questions on the questions pane, you know, please do contact us directly via the email address on screen. So comms team at osteopathy.org.uk and we will respond to you um, that way in answering your questions. And for those of you that don't get your, your questions answered, now we will follow up with you via email as well so i am now going to see if we can have a look at the the poll results or well, hopefully they will appear in a second and stacy this is rachel behind the scenes i can read out the poll results if that's helpful for you yeah go for it it's not appearing in the chat box sorry rachel go okay that's no problem at all um just to say 64 percent of attendees have selected a peer and 36 percent have not in terms of objective activity 39 percent have selected case-based discussion seven percent clinical audit nine percent patient feedback five percent peer observation and 40 percent haven't done one yet so. okay that's great thank you everyone for taking part in the poll i think that you know that's re really helpful in terms of highlighting where people are in terms of the group and overall um, so large proportion of you have selected a peer um, for the peer discussion review, which is great news. And hopefully from this webinar, you've kind of know your sort of next steps and what, what to do. Um, obviously, the 40% um, that haven't completed an objective activity, that might be a starting point for you once you've, um, you know, perhaps think about selecting who might be your peer and then think about perhaps um, undertaking a, an objective activity so that you can then have a go at completing um, components of the, the PDR template, but also great to hear that many of you have, have begun that process of completing an objective activity, and it looks like the most popular at 39% is case-based discussion, so that's great. Thank, thank you. So I thought perhaps we could go to the questions now, if that's okay with everyone. So I'm going to bring Matthew back, hopefully. <laughs> Basically, thank you ever so much for taking us through that particular um, presentation that was really helpful and, and hopefully um, attendees on the call have found that beneficial. Um, there's been a number of questions that have come through and I think it's fair to say that we're probably not going to be able to um, capture all of those questions within the little bit of time that we do have left but as Stacey said and just to reiterate we will respond to everybody after the event. Um, in terms of the um, presentation there will be um, a, the presentation will be made available within the handout section of your control panel. And within the presentation, as Stacey's um, sort of alluded to, there are a number of different links to the various templates um, that you can um, sort of look at, download and complete. So in terms of some of the questions that have come through, um, Stacey, there seem to be sort of a, a theme of some osteopaths asking whether um, the peer discussion with you could be um, sort of more than one person. So could sort of uh, could sort of there be a sort of that group approach um, to 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 the to the present uh, to the peer discussion review, or does it just have to have to be one person? Yeah. Okay, Matthew, I can answer that one definitely. Um, as you know, part of the presentation, as I said, yeah, we we welcome osteopaths to do the peer their peer discussion review in in groups if they if they so want to. And there's that flexibility in the peer discussion review template to to have multiple um 
osteopaths or healthcare professionals um, sign off those elements of, of, of your CPD scheme. So yes, absolutely. And, and as I said earlier, I'd recommend you having a look at the Northern Ireland osteopaths case study uh, if, if you're thinking about doing it as a, as a, as a group for some, some ideas. That's a particularly interesting case study, that Northern Ireland group. And, and I think it, 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 there's a nice um, sort of balance between the conversation that takes place when you compare that to the sort of the one to one um, sort of route. So I think that will give the individuals the opportunity to, to have a think about what might work best for them in their circumstances. So, so do have a look at those. There's some really useful information there. Um, there's been a couple of questions asking whether it would be OK if osteopath A peer reviewed osteopath B. Is it OK for that to be done in return? And, and I think, you know, the short answer to that is, you know, yeah. osteopaths are professionals. And I think that's, you know, that's really important to make that clear. You know, by being a healthcare professional, there is a level of trust that is put in you um, because of the position that you hold. So, you know, absolutely, that would not be that would not be a problem at all. And Stacey, there was some sort of interest in the template materials. And we've, we've said that these are available yeah. in the presentation that we're sending round, but they can also be found on the CPD site as well, can't they? They can, absolutely. So both the blank template and the completed template are, are on the CPD website. But shortly after um, the webinar, you will receive an email from us um, with the PowerPoint presentation, the completed example um, uh, PDR template as well, so you will receive it in email format as well. In terms of those blank templates, um, there was a couple of questions that came through um, asking whether or not the template had to be completed online. Could it be downloaded? Could it be um, sort of, you know, effectively sort of uh, filled in sort of old-fashioned way, sort of, if you like, in? Yeah. Absolutely. There, you know, we're not prescribing how that needs to be, how that needs to be done. Again, it's what works best for you as an individual with your peer reviewer and how you make that how you make that work. So we're not sort of setting what needs to be done in that regard. If you wanted to complete the forms um, sort of electronically, those forms that are downloadable um, are all available um, to, to, to be used. So they're, they're, they're there for, for everybody. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just, you know, use the template as, as you want to. And, you know, if you want to complete the peer discussion review template in, in, in one sitting um, and you want to just jot down, you know, and do, do it by old fashioned hand, you know, by, by hand, that's absolutely fine as well. So, Stacey, there was a question that's come through um, in, 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 in the chat about um, the, the length of time um, that the Peer discussion yeah. review meeting should take place and I know you alluded to the fact that some osteopaths have taken an hour some have taken slightly longer but we're not prescribing how long that should be are we no not at all the, the, those those figures are, are just uh, what we've gathered from from osteopaths having a go at uh, trying it out al already so anything but they've reported anything between an hour and uh, an hour and 30 minutes um, but no it does you know it could take if, if you do it sort of as you go it could, could be much shorter um, overall and so you know n no prescription on, on how long that would take necessarily it's just to give you a rough idea and, and in terms of the online diary um, that's available for osteopaths to use, um, there's functionality that's uh, connected to that diary, which means it can be downloaded and exported. So there were a couple of questions that, that came through where people were asking how could they share their online diary with their peer discussion reviewer? Or as I say, there is that functionality where it can be emailed out or it can be printed off and, and, and sort of shared um, through sort of a face-to-face -face conversation. Assuming, of course, we're able to get back to that type of uh, that type of work. Yeah, absolutely. In the in the top right hand corner of the um, online diary um, on the Ozone, there is a little envelope icon which would allow you to email your um, a copy of, of your of your diary so far um, to to your designated peer. Um, it will basically turn your diary into a PDF, and and you will be able to to, to share it with with your peer. Basically, when you took um, sort of colleagues through the peer discussion with you, and you were you were showing where the information could be um, sort of completed under each um, each standard, yeah. um, under the objective activity, that's where an individual could complete information in relation to proms. And there was a sort of yeah. specific question that was arisen about how much detail 
potentially would be required uh, within those sort of sections for the peer discussion reviewer to feel comfortable signing that particular standard off. Um, very, to be honest, very limited um, text needs to go into the peer discussion review template. You know, we're, we're looking at a few sentences to, to a you know, maximum of a probably you know a couple of paragraphs being the maximum. Each each section of the peer discussion review template's got a, a, a word limit, so you'll you'll get an idea that that, that it's it's not expecting um, a large amount of te text in there um, for for either you or the peer to to put in there. But but I just advise the person um, that posted that question around the proms what supplementary material would you share with your peer in relation to the proms? So for example, that it might be the Encore report that you receive in terms of how how your um, your results compare to the overall prof profession, for example, and, and that would be sufficient along with the conversation that you have with your peer. So, so very, very limited in, um, information needs to go into the template. The values in the discussion that you have with, with your peer. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's the critical thing. It's, it's you know, make sure that there is that focus on the discussion and that interaction, because that's where the learning comes from. It's, it's, it's less about the form filling and a, and a bureaucratic sort of process in that regard. Um, th there was a question regarding electronic signatures. Are electronic signatures OK on documents or does it have to be sort of a wet signature? And electronic signatures, absolutely fine. We recognise um, that actually we're moving much more to an online way of working, so there's certainly no problem um, where that's concerned at all. And in relation to a, a question that was posed about um, demonstrating um, that you've undertaken activities across the four um, themes of the osteopathic practice standards, you don't need to reference the specific standards within the theme. That's, that, that's not sort of that level of granularity that, that we require. You might find it helpful um, as, you, as you complete the, the form, you might want to specifically refer to a standard, but that's not um, a particular um, requirement that we um, have put into the CPD scheme. Now, I'm just conscious of time, so we'll probably just try and get another couple of questions in, and then we will need to wrap, uh, wrap things up. Um, there, there was a question regarding non-practicing uh, registrants and would it be possible to use sort of case histories from sort of a time when an individual was practicing? Um, and, and I think, you know, yes is the simple yeah. answer to that, but Stacey, I didn't know if there was anything more yeah. you wanted to, to say. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've we, when we've done um, case-based discussions with with, with um, groups of osteopaths, they often draw on cases that that have perhaps you know have been challenging for some in in some way um, that that have taken place some time ago. So that that's perfectly fine for those that ha have currently been in a sort of non-practicing mode. And the final question that um, I'm just going to um, sort of flag up, and apologies to those people that we've not covered uh, questions for, but you know, just to say once again, we will respond to you. Um, there was just a question concerning the Institute of Osteopathy um, platform and um, yeah. about how um, access to that platform can be, um, can, be, can be made available. And we can share that particular link um, through our communication after the event, can't we? Yeah, the link in for for the platform is actually in the slide pack where when we get to that that uh, that platform. So you, if you click on that link when you receive the PowerPoint presentation, it will take you to this, the the um, login page, and then you'll be able to um, if if you want to, um, you know, register your profile and start to build that profile so that you can get some matches um, if if that's something you want to do. But yeah, that's super. Well, it just falls to me to thank everybody for your time during the course of the last hour it's absolutely flown past it's been a really interesting session and it's great to see so many questions coming through um, so great to have that interaction and and you know fabulous attendance from from everybody um, online so as i said at the beginning we'll be running more of these events across the full range of our business to help explain what we do um, there will be a follow-up email that comes out to you all after the events where you can provide feedback um, on the webinar and we will be, as I say, sharing um, the slide pack with you. I'd just like to take the opportunity once again, and I would like to say to everybody online, please stay safe, and I hope that at some point in time, we will be able to see each other face to face. But thank you very much indeed for your time this afternoon, everybody. <laughs>